there are some times that you would want to analyze your data or operate your functions in Excel, and you don't want to use uh, the cells, the cell identity names. So you are going to you are going to new, use the name range. I tried to do this last week, but uh, I was um, I was missing out something. So what does the name range mean? So you have is a data set from here, from cell B7 to down to cell, um, this is the last cell L114. So, and you want to answer these questions below using name ranges. So what do you do? Now, if you look at this, uh, this table, because this is a table, and this is a data set, even though not converted to a table yet, but this is distributor ID, this is distributor name, this is country, this is product, this is product, this is sales channel, date sold, month sold, quantity, unit price, and revenue. So I want to tell I want to tell about what we call the primary key and the, the foreign key of any table that you see. This, this will be beneficial when we get to SQL. So I won't, I won't mention it again, but you will see the how we uh, create, when we want to create tables in SQL, you need to specify which one is the primary key. So whenever you have a, 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 a data set of a particular uh, company or product, this distributor ID here is the primary key because, because there is no two persons that can have the same distributor ID. So the primary key is the column that has that is filled with unique values. Distributor name. One or two persons can have the same distributor name. It's possible. Country. You can have a repetition of countries here. Product code. Okay, product code too. You see, these two products are the same. So this cannot be a primary key. But this could be distributor ID that everybody has a unique ID. We call it a primary key. Let me stop here for now till we get to the practical application in uh, SQL. Now, our question said, determine the quantity sold using name ranges. Normally, if I want to determine the quantity, so there is a, there is a column here called quantity. See it here. So we are asked to determine the sum of quantity sold using name ranges. Normally, I would have saved some this cell, sum this cell to this cell, normally. But they said using name ranges. So what they want you to do is to, first of all, you know how to highlight a cell automatically. Control shift, arrow key down. Did you see what I just did? Control shift, arrow key down. So I like the cell. Come to this place. I like the cell. Come to this place. Come to this place. And name it. You can say quantity. You can say quantity. If you want to say quantity sold, I, I believe you guys can still hear me. If you want to say quantity sold, please put underscore if you type quantity sold like this excel will not accept it excel will not accept it you see excel will not accept it so but you can say quantity like this and then you have named that range quickly you can see my screen how? Can you see it now? Peculiar, hello? Are you seeing it now? 
Yes, I can see it now. Okay, so this is this particular. Yes, this I can see it now. This particular column, I have given it a name here. The reason why I did this is such that when I now come to get the sum of quantities sold using name ranges, instead of saying equal to some some cell C C three or C two to C one one four, I will now say some quantity. So that name that I have given to it will pop up. So this indication here indicates that there is a quantity column. Some quantity. I will close my bracket. So this is a sum of quantity. So please, you are, we are not hearing you. I don't know about us. You say you can't hear me. How? The network is cracking. I'm not following it. You, you, you can't believe that I have ether here, I have MTN here, I have blue. I've been Hello, switching yeah. between them. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Are others hearing me? Yes, or is it to you? Oh, my God. Can I go ahead now? Is it better? That's yes, it. yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So I said, I gave it a range here. Did you get how I did this? The quantity column, I gave it a range, a name, and then just said quantity. The reason why you will do this is because there are so many times you can have so many columns in one table. So many columns in one table. And then you may not know the reference cell what to what that you want to work on. So instead of uh, having them having them uh, as C3 to C1000, you can just give it name, give that range, you can just name it. So that each time you want to uh, do any uh, application or any uh, fun uh, function with it, you can just call up the name of the range. This one said, determine the average unit price using name range. Hint, you have to create a name range for this. So let's go and look for average, let's go and look for unit price. Okay, so this is the unit price column. Control shift, arrow key down, highlight everything, come to name, come to name box, call it unit underscore price. Not unit price, unit underscore price. Aha, uh -huh. so Excel has known that there is a row, sorry, there is a column called unit price, such that when you come here, and say equal to average average and now say unit price. See unit price here. So Excel has automatically highlighted everything. And you can have your average. The beauty of this name range is that even when you are on another sheet, even when you open up a new sheet, even when you open up a new sheet, let's take for example, I open up a new sheet here, and I want to, I want to add equal to some quantity. Can you see quantity here? Times, I want to say a quantity times unit price. See unit price here. So, okay. Sorry. Equal to some quantity. Excel can do the calculation for me. Excel can do the calculation for me. If I say, if I still say average unit unit price. This is on an, another sheet. Oh, I, I wonder why the average is not working. Wait, let me redo it again. Average unit price. Mm, okay. Aha, so it should be able to work. That's um, the that's, um, uh, response he gave me here. I can have it on another sheet. So if you have multiple sheets of data, 
and you want to work on them, maybe in another ship, the best thing to do is to name your ranges so that you can quickly apply your functions. That is name range for you. Now, let's look at the advanced ones called structural, structural referencing. In structural referencing, we are not just naming one cell, or sorry, we're not just naming one column by one column. We are naming the whole table. This one, we save you a lot of time. We are naming the whole table. So this is a distributor uh, table containing distributor ID, distributor name, country, products, product, cell channel, and the rest. So I will click on anywhere on the table and say control, control T. I'll first of all convert it to a table that's control T. When I do this, please look up. Under your table design here, you are going to see the, the name of this table. Excel has called it table one. But you are going to rename it. Maybe you're going to call it distributor table. Remember your underscore, distributor table, like this. Sorry, I didn't get the sign of distributor. Distributor table, like this. Did you follow? So instead of you naming the range one column by one column, no. Name the whole table, like this, distributor table. Uh -huh. So anywhere inside this table, Excel is seeing it as distributor table. Distributor table. Now, come down to the same sum of quantity sold using structural referencing. Instead of saying sum quantity, you will say equal to sum distributor table. See it here. And then you will use your set bracket. So Excel will list everything that is inside your distributor table. You then pick the one you want. Inside it, you have quantity. And you close it back with your set bracket. I don't know whether you guys understood that. Should I do it again? Hello? Should I do it again? Okay. Please, I, I prefer you to speak than to type. Peculiar, you said I should do it again. All right. So in rem, in rem ranges, I picked the columns one after the other. But in structural referencing, I converted all the data sets to a table and then gave it a name called distributor table, such that when I now want to do my calculation, I will say equal to sum from, I will first of all call out the table name before the column, distributor table, see it here. This part, whenever you see this notation, it means that that data, that data set has, is already a table. Is a named table. So I'll say some distributor table. Inside distributor table, I'm looking for the column called quantity. Inside the distributor table. So I will use this kind of bracket here. Not the normal bracket, because this, I don't know. I, I think this is a set bracket, right? This kind, this bracket. Aha. Uh -huh. It's after your P. Look at your keyboard. It's after your P. Once you click on the, or press that bracket, Excel will bring out all the columns that are inside that table. I'm looking for quantity. This is quantity that I'm looking for. I'll pick it. And then I'll close my bracket. I'll close my bracket. This is because a data set can be given to you that contains plenty tables segregated differently. I have seen such data sets that have a, a, a lot of, so what you need to do, name your tables, structure your tables, and then pick out the variable. You saw that you can know that quantity belongs to distributor ID. The other column belongs to another table, so you don't mix them up. 
So this is what we we'll call structural referencing. Some, first of all, you show your table, and then you pick out, you use this bracket to pick out the column from inside that table. All right, so for average unit price, the same thing, say equal to average, equal to average, first of all, you call out your distributor table, the distributor table, inside the distributor Chiso, table. I'm not, I'm not getting this, my, oh, go okay, ahead, ahead. okay, here. no, don't. No, I, I figured it out. Thank you. Okay, so inside your distribution table, distributor table, you put your bracket. Excel will list out what are we looking for? They said average unit price. So this is unit price. And we pick it out. And then this is what we'll have. So if I ask you between name ranges and structural reference, which one is faster? For me. This is faster. Instead of coming to be saying uh, range and naming each of the column one after the other, just name the whole table and then pick out the columns from the table using your set bracket. So that tomorrow, when you after this class, when you are seeing Excel formula that are not bearing C1 to C30 or C1, you won't, you won't be confused. It's not all the time. In short, how we even know that you are still a learner? or that you've not come up to a certain uh, uh, level of usage of Excel, is when you are doing some C1 to C25, C2, no, 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 no. Just name the columns. If you want to know, use memory, or name the whole table and pick out the columns from the table, one after the other. It's easier that way. Do we have any questions? All right, so I believe you guys understood this. So let's move to let's move to data cleaning again. We 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 did uh, 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 data cleaning the last time that was on I think on Sunday last week, but it was not deep enough because part of this part of the skill of every data analyst part of the skill of anybody that will be good with data analysis is data cleaning. In short, if you don't know how to clean data, you are already limited because you can't even go, a, go ahead to analyze. So for this data cleaning class, I, I, I uh, got a data for you guys that we can work with in class and another one for your assignment. This one is not optional. Please, you are going to submit it. By, uh, I'm going to give you the whole of next week. So I'm going to submit it by Saturday next week. Let me see what uh, if the skills have have you have mastered them. Remember that these things are not just for you to come and listen and see how it is done. Practice them yourself so that you can know. If you don't do it, you don't know it. Even if I repeat it one thousand times. So they were going to clean this data after this exercise. Now we are going to see quite a lot of data cleaning techniques. All right. So last week, I told us about the clean function, the trim function, the substitute function, the length function, the right function, uh, the text to column function, and the flash fill function. These eight functions are what we did last week. We are also going to look at other data cleaning functions now. And then how do you nest one function with, with each other? Remember, nesting means combining two functions together in Excel, two or more functions together in Excel. So your manager has given you a table of raw data to perform analysis on. This data has been pulled from multiple sources and needs to be standardized prior to analysis. So I told you guys that these things are what we call unprintable char char characteristics that comes with, especially data you call out from the database. Unprintable characteristics. If you are doing the data entry yourself, you may not put this, except you put it in error. But sometimes when we get data, especially at CSV, or from very large databases, you can have this funny, funny notation. So how do you remove it? You use the command or use the function clean. You say clean 
Remember that clean, the clean argument works for text. You highlight this guy. And this unprintable character will go such that you can use your fill handle to drag it down. And you have a clean data set. This one looks simple. Let's go to the next um, problem. Okay, so the instruction said, find the total of... So, please, can yes. you um, redo that clean one again? Okay. I said, you have unprintable characteristics here. You want to remove them. You can't come and be removing them one after the other. No, 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 no. Just use the click equal to. Remember, every Excel function starts with an equal equality sign equal to clean. Whenever you type a command or a function in Excel, please use tab, tab, tab to complete it. Call it up, clean. What are you cleaning? Cell B13. Close your bracket. And you say, okay. So you drag it down. The data set is clean. I hope you got that. Now let's look at this guy. They said, find the total of these values. If you look at this place, you see an unprintable character here. 121, 2211. So which function are we going to use to remove these things from here? Which function? Hello? Hello? Are you guys still with me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. What function am I going to ask the question now? I want this class to be interactive. I don't like talking alone. I don't know why it feels like everything we learned in the past has flown away. Maybe Are you because serious? we're mixing. Maybe why, because why we're did, mixing. Why did I you fly now? now? My head is thinking in starter. For some reason, I can't remember. Do you, you see why I, I recommend? Do you see why I recommend <laughs> not combining these two trainings together? <laughs> Honestly, I'm struggle. Like I'm struggling, and these are things that are so easy. I'm not supposed to struggle. I don't know why. Wait, oh, I, is your is your head clashing with the one you, you are learning in the other? Your... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. You and uh, so. Tessie and my student the other side. I wonder mm. how you are going. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, if you have a large memory, you can accommodate everything. That's why there are so many things that so many times that people will come to me and say, "I want, to I, I want to, I want to learn SPSS. I want to learn Theta. I want to learn Python." I will tell you, calm down. Wait, wait. <laughs> Once we do the first and second class, and you do the first and second class, the other place, the two of them will start clashing. Hmm. Honestly, no maybe, maybe I need to be looking at the previous videos prior to the start of the class. Exactly. That's, like. exactly. that's why ha we're having this one only on weekends, today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that you can have the space of the whole day or um, Tuesdays and Fridays that we are not meeting. See how you can juggle. I believe I'm a slow teacher. And I teach and I teach slowly. Uh, no, so you're, you can... you're doing great. You are. Thank you. This is not my first data uh, analysis class that I'm taking, but for some reason, I understand yours much better than I've ever, oh, I've ever been I'm taught. Happy. Yes. I'm happy. I'm happy. That's what people say. Whenever I train people, that's why when I when you come and you are complaining that you don't, I tell you, don't worry. I tell my training first. Uh, when you now finish, if you don't understand my own, uh, I don't know. So, we are going to use the clean function here to remove this. Say clean. And then, is an, I, I said it's an argument for text. It's an argument for text. So, this is what we'll have. Do you have this? Tessie, do you have this? Peculiar, do you have this? Fritz, do you have this? Ms. Dixon, yes, do you sir. have this? 
All right, all right. So this is this, but let us see. Can we actually get the total of these numbers here? Let's see. Some this guy. Some C uh 40 to C plus 4. Can you see that Excel is giving us zero? Did you notice that Excel is not summing up this number? Even though we've removed the errors from them. What could be the problem? Anyone? Hello? What could be the problem? Um, sir, I noticed that when you were summing, this yeah. um, particular column was under C, but you did D40. So I don't know if that's the problem. No, 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 no. I said B40 to B44. See, 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 see it now. I didn't add this one. C. C40 to C44. I'm, I was correct. Please note, did you remember our first lecture? When I told you guys that values are formatted to the right. Values in Excel are formatted to the right. These things are small, small things that will save you. I am an experienced data analyst. I know what I'm saying. These are small, small things that I did not catch early. That they will give me a data to clean, and then I'll be having a lot of headache. Data cleaning gives you headache because you don't understand where to apply and the structure of your each of your data. That is that's where your problem will start from. Text, uh, sorry, values. These are so values, but they are aligned to the left. This is wrong. That is why you can never get the total here, no matter how much you try. It's only a text that are aligned to the right. To the right. Remember the first day we did data entry. I told you guys that text and alpha numeric data are supposed to be aligned to this side. But whenever it's a value, it should align to this side. So there is a, a unique function called value. Watch. That we can use to correct this. That we can say, can you see it now? Such that when we say equal to sum this guy to this guy, Excel will give us the sum. So beware of when your numerical data or your uh, data that, that is numbered are arranged this way. It is not proper. Use the value function to convert them to the actual value that is supposed to be there so that you can use it to run your calculations. If not, you, you won't be wondering why it's not working. So it is a core part of data cleaning. All text should be text. Values should be values. Text should be to the right, to the left. Values should be to the right before you start analysis. If you carry this in and put inside Stata, Stata will see this thing. You will be surprised that Stata will label this thing red. Like Stata will see it as as a text, you will just be wondering, what, well, what, but it's value now. What, what's happening? It's because Excel is still seeing it as a text, not as a value. I hope you understood what I said. Hello. Yes, All, right. All right. Yes. All right. So, but if I'm you, instead of bringing this guy out, I can nest the clean function here with. The value function. I can nest it like this. Put my double bracket. You see. So instead of having only clean function, I can add, I can nest value to it. So I, I will not come and have to do it again. But if you if you if your hand is not strong or this one will confuse you, just apply the clean function first. Then from the clean function, apply the value function. Or you can actually combine the two of them or nest the two of them together so that you can have this. So this data is clean. But the instruction said, find the total of these values. And you must find it too. Are we clear? All right. So I believe we understood this. On a good day, you will thank me because this will save you energy and stress. And when you go for a job in interview as a data analyst, and you say you are proficient in Excel, they will say, okay, now. Some companies will bring a, 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 
a very messy data set to you and say, oh yeah, clean. Whatever method you use to clean it, all they all they are, all they know is that the data is clean. Are you savvy? So imagine when you have applied the clean function here, and you can't still get this total. You'll be frustrated. So let's go. Let's go to the second one. Section two. Last week I also mentioned the trim function. The trim function is different from the clean function. The clean function removes unprintable characteristics, but the trim function removes unnecessary spacing. They are not the same. If you look at this data set, you can see on this unnecessary spacing here. So the trim function will remove it. So you say trim this guy. And you apply it to the other cells. So you see all those unnecessary, all those unnecessary spaces are gone. This is the trim function. Very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. There are people that don't know how to do data entry. They can just be entering uh, how what, what they want. But just when you use your trim function, trim will align everything and um, is a is an important data cleaning function. Okay, let's go to the substitute function. The substitute function, what does it mean to substitute? What does it mean to substitute? To carry this in and put in the other, or to put in place of the other. Your manager has given you a table of raw data to perform analysis on. The data has been put from multiple sources and need to be standardized prior to analysis. Whenever you hear data standardization, it is the same thing with data cleaning, you know, data integrity making sure that all your data are clean. There are people that are employed in NGOs or MIE officers, but one of the core duties, their core duties is to make sure that data is standardized and have integrity. Because tomorrow, if they want to uh, look at the database, everything will be in order. Okay. So if you look at this column, we have five MG here. 20 mg here, 54 mg here, okay, there's no mg here, 3 to 5 mg here, this and this. But before we go to this list, let me show us something. Let me show us something using, because I've been preparing for this class since this morning. So I said before, let me show us something using this um, exercise. Now, someone gives you a, a, a very, unclean data set or any data and tells you to please derive this, derive output from this. Use this as a replacement and derive this output. Now, this is total, T-U-T-T-L-E. But the person wants you to change, replace uh, all the T's here with B so that it becomes bubble. Replace all the T's here with B, so it becomes bubble. How do you do it? The clean function, the trim function cannot save you here. Cannot work. You substitute, substitute, substitute. Are you following me? I hope I'm slow enough. Are you following me? Give me yes, a yes. Sir. Okay. Substitute the old cell. Comma. Look at the text argument. The old cell, comma. The old text. What what is it you are substituting? Remember that if it's a if it's a if it's a text, you must put it in uh, double quotation, except it's a number that you are substituting. But if it's a text, you must put it in double quotation. Now, substitute this guy T. With the new text, what are we actually substituting it with? That's substituting it with B, and you close your bracket. Substitute from here. This is the origin. T from from the old one, and then substitute B, the new one. So this is what you have. You have bubble. See the command substitute. From here, what is the old? You pick it. What is the new? You pick it. 
Then for this place, we are required to substitute turtle for it to become bottle. Please, no. <laughs> this one is tricky. They are not the same thing. No. You say equal to. Let's see. Sorry. Substitute this guy. Oh my. Look at this place carefully. Can you see that they want in as much as they want you to so if you substitute, how will you substitute this so that it can become bottle? Because if you say substitute um T, comma, B with B. Sorry. B like this. It means that Excel will go and Oh, you see it. Excel we go and um Excel we go and substitute all the T's that are here with B. Is that what we want? No. We want to get bottle. Such that it's only this one T here that you want it to substitute. And you should leave this one. So what do you do? You put an instance number. You put an instance number. What is an instance number? Comma. Which T do you want it to substitute? Is it T1? This is one, two, three, four, five, six. If you want it to substitute one, three and four, sorry, one, two, three and four, you will say three, four here, three comma four. But if you want it to substitute only one, this is the first T. Say instance number one. So this is what you will have. Did you get this? Substitution with instant number. Hello, no response. Did we get this? Yes, I, I got it. Okay. I so got it. Substitute with instant number one, which means take only this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take only this guy and substitute. Leave the others. That's what I said. So, this is what you have. This is how we know whether you are, you are, you are a good uh, data cleaner. There are people that I know, their job is data cleaning. Uh -huh. They went into data analysis, they majored in data cleaning. Uh -huh. So there is no data they can't clean. They will charge you for it. Send them the data, no matter how large, they will clean it and send it back to you. They now do your analysis. All right, so here, we are meant to substitute cat with dog. We are meant to substitute cat with dog. So see the same thing, substitute, we carry this guy, comma. What is our old, what are we substituting here? Cat. And what are we substituting it with? Dog, close your brackets. Do you understand? So this is what you have, cat and dog. Cat and dog. Okay. Finally, here, I'm doing this so that when we come to this substitute function here, <laughs> you will now understand, it will now be an easy work for you. So these are the four scenarios you may always have. Hmm? Someone tells you to substitute uh, cash for this. So it means what it's telling you is to remove all this, uh, what do you call it? All this um, uh, hash. Hmm? So you say substitute. Old text comma. What are you substituting? What are you removing from here? Hello. Hey, are you people following me? What are you removing from here? Yeah, you're moving the hash, sir. Very good. 
So hash. You don't need to type it two times, but it's still the same thing. So what are you substituting it with? Mama? You are substituting it with nothing. Did you did you get me? You are substituting it with nothing. So it means that you are removing it butter, butter, every entirely. So this is what you have. Mr. Chisum, so if they yes, give us a very messy data with different different uh different errors like this, this is how yes. we go through it. We can't do the flash no, thing no, now. No, no, look, look, look. Do you know? Don't worry. This, we are going to solve this exercise. Uh -huh. uh, we are not, we are going to have a brother. Don't worry, I prepared for your class. Don't worry. We are going to have a brother a brother view when we come to this one. This is a messy data. So this is a, a very I'm just looking at the function one after the other, so that when we now apply it, you now say you don't understand. Okay. So the first thing is to understand the function in a small application, so that you can now apply it, apply it to a bigger data. So if I don't, if, if I don't explain this one, you won't understand it when we now apply it in the big place. So this is substitute Thank for you. you. All right. This is substitute for you. Let's come back here. So we want to substitute, um, want to tell Excel to remove this guy, this hyphen here, this hyphen in three hyphen five. This is supposed to be that five mg, just like this one is five mg, twenty mg, uh -huh. and then so we are going to tell Excel to substitute this. So we say substitute this guy, comma. We are substituting hyphen, and we are substituting it, comma, with nothing. Close your bracket. So it will not apply here. Of course, this one doesn't have hyphen. When you drag it down, you can now see. So we have three. You can now see this is that five mg. This is that five mg. This is that five mg. But is this data clean now? I'm asking you people, is it clean? No. So what other thing can we do? What other function can we apply for it to be clean? We can we to trim. Aha. Very good. So we need to nest this uh, substitute function with trim. So how do we do it? We say trim. Trim. Home brackets and close bracket. another bracket. Substitute. We now have mm -hmm. a, a much more clean data. Mm -hmm. Now, when you watch YouTube videos and you see the way Oibo, Oibo people begin this, thing, <laughs> you will not <laughs> see it. You will not understand. <laughs> Before you net a function, please put the main function first and then put the next function letter. See how I'd always do my, the main, because substitute is the main function, not trim. So substitute and then trim behind it. Okay. So let's go to another example. I hope you are learning. Guys, I hope you are learning. 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 Eh? The money yes, you pay for it is not a waste. Hmm? It will not be, eh? don't worry. Okay, so you have been taxed to create a table for 215 and 216 cost, cost data. You have already created the term list for sales data in the previous two years. Using the data on the left and the substitute formula, create a new list on the right hand column. I hope I'm still recording. Okay. Create a new list on the right hand column. So all your manager wants you to do here is, since you already have this sales data for quarter one to quarter four, I'm in different year. Just create, recreate this thing for 2015 and 2016. So anywhere you see 2013, replace it with 2015. And anywhere you see 2014, replace it with 2016. 
There are two ways to do this thing, but I'll teach on the other way first, which is a substitute. There is also a find and replace function that you can that can do this for you. But let's use the substitute function. Okay. So we say equal to substitute substitute this guy b forty two comma. I want to substitute two thousand and thirteen with two thousand fifteen. Please, I don't need to put it inside the quotation mark again because this is a, a number. Quotation mark is for text. I'll simply say 2013, 2016. Simple. Oh, why is this guy staying here now? I don't understand. This is where I did the function now. Substitute. Yeah. Uh -uh. But I'm struggling with moving my pistol here. Stop the truth. This comma two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and sixteen. Uh -huh. So I can now apply it to others. Did you get this? Did you get this? From your side, did you get this? Yes. Well, is this correct? Did you see that this one is not substitute? Did you observe that this one is not substitute? Test it. Hello, test it. Yes, sir. You are following, right? I in 2015 and 2016. Yes, we said substitute 2015 with this, and then substitute yeah, 2016. But this one did not substitute. You are huh? substituting 2013 with 2016. Yes. Okay. 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 It should be 2015. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 2015. Okay. If, but even at that, this one too is not also substitute. Yeah, because it's not 2013 now. We picked 2013 ah. to 2013. So if you have this issue, what, what do you go to? Will it be doing it one one? We will now pick 2014 and substitute to 2016. <laughs> so I should change 2016 here, Abby. <laughs> No, no, you changed now, 2013 now. <laughs> the reason that it didn't even work. See, see, I've changed it too. Okay, okay, okay. 20, I picked 2014. Uh, yeah. 20, uh, 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 so if I have 10,000 of this data, is this what I should be doing? <laughs> That's what we have been doing, you know. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Let's do yes, yes, yes. Let's use a more superior way. This one is actually correct. You know, Excel, Excel permits you to do at your level, at your level of knowledge. The important thing is that you got you saw you saw that the issue. No wahala. But we can nest two substitute functions at the same time, such that we can say substitute this guy one. We can also have another substitute here. Oh my God, sorry. Have another substitute here. That will now be. Two thousand and. Two thousand and. Um, Two thousand and fourteen. To 2016. We close our bracket. Do you grab? What you are telling us is please substitute this one and also substitute this one. Let's check. Did it work? Hello? 
Is it better now? Yes, it works. Yes. Yeah, so you can nest two functions together. You know, yeah, you can now be consulting. You, you know that you are not a, a pro. When you start nesting for ah, there are people that can nest functions. Kai, in data cleaning, if you don't know how to nest, you 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 will cry. You can nest three with substitute, nest it with a unique proper, depending on how the data is. Just know how to whichever one to place the main or the function you want to. And that they will just work. It will be like as if you did magic. But some other person that I don't know will be doing it one one, one one, one one, one one. Uh -huh. So let's assume that it's a data interview and we are all giving the same Excel to work on. Two minutes, I'm done. Ten minutes, you are still sweat. Who will they give the job? <laughs> uh, you got it at the end of your ten minutes. Oh, you are sweating. All right. All right. So you can nest one argument with another one. Can we go ahead? Is it answering? Um, please, can I see the previous next nesting that we did? The, no, not this one. The other question, the other problem. Okay, the, so. the upper one. Okay, this one. Mm. How we nest here? We nested three months substitute. We said replace, okay. replace okay. this not yeah. Okay, I understand. We only did with one. Exactly. Yeah, but that one nice. Two different things. Okay. Please a minute. Let me drink water. Yes, I'm back. Sorry. Somebody was asking me. Okay, please try. Can I do what?